Hello wrestling fans, The Wrestling Wizard here and welcome to another video. Now this video was requested from a subscriber. Um, if you request, I listen and I'm certainly going to put videos out there that you want to see. And this was in regards to this week's episode of Smackdown because if you didn't already know, during this week's episode of Smackdown, specifically during a commercial break, yet again some dodgy shenanigans were going on. WWE are pulling with our heartstrings, messing with our emotions again seemingly. Because, yes, it's common practice when you attend a WWE event. You see things obviously you don't see on air. And typically sometimes they might play around with the lighting, maybe some acoustics. But on this occasion, they turn the whole arena red, literally messing around with the lighting, specifically the stage. So maybe they're practicing an entrance um, to come in the future. But also, they played the psychedelic theme, White Rabbit. Now, I think they're by a band called Jefferson Airplane, I think it might be. Um, I am familiar with the theme. Um, they, obviously, I can't play the theme due to copyright reasons. Um, but it was an acoustic version, I believe, linked with this red lighting. Obviously, the world, the wrestling world, and the people in that arena at the time went mad. Um, they were literally waving their phones up in the air uh, with the lighting, obviously, Firefly-esque. And... People were straight away, understandably, uh, drawing parallels to Bray Wyatt, potentially this being a link to The Fiend. Now, one thing I will say is, again, we don't know. Like, I don't know. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, if he ever is going to return to WWE and when he's going to return to WWE, I'm not going to know about it. I don't want to know about it. I want to be surprised. So I can't say yes or no whether there's any links there. However, many people were also drawing comparisons to Karrion Cross saying that the White Rabbit uh, moniker um, he used in Lucha Underground. So potentially there's some links. Now, one thing I will say, is there anything wrong with the Karrion Cross presentation WWE at the moment? In my opinion, no. He's got one of the best entrances there is. That is one of the strongest points of the Karrion Cross presentation alongside Scarlett. So I'd be very surprised. However, thinking about it outside the box a bit, what if they're teasing a potential team up between Karrion Cross and a returning Bray Wyatt or The Fiend. Now we know how much Karrion Cross wants to work with Bray Wyatt, he's made that quite public. Just imagine Cross and The Fiend. And if we take this, I know this is reaching massively, but if you take this all the way back to the Edge cryptic promos, we saw of course the Hourglass TikTok within those cryptic videos. Karrion Cross returned. There was a kind of monster-esque feel about that presentation in those cryptic videos. We saw Braun Strowman return, the monster among men. And of course, there's a lot of Bray Wyatt, well, implied Bray Wyatt fiend references. So what if it was like actually referencing those subtly and then we then see those all return? Imagine chucking Ed Edge into the mix. I don't think he would mix with the fiend, to be honest with you, in all honesty. Um, however, carrying Cross and the fiend, um, we know Cross is going after McIntyre, he's hinted Roman Reigns. Who needs to get revenge on Roman Reigns at some point? Of course, The Fiend. And also, if you go all the way back to September the 2nd, the Smackdown, the tape version of Smackdown before Clash at the Castle. I can't believe I missed this. And again, I can't quite put the correct scene up, but there's a, there's a moment when, well, we know it's JBL. JBL pulls up in a limo and then takes in Happy Corbin and then seemingly we're going to see some form of management down the line from JBL um, as like a, a leader to Baron Corbin down the line. Which I love because, remember, Baron Corbin was the last person to beat Roman Reigns. So hopefully they could uh, heat Corbin back up. In the background, and again this is probably the biggest reach in the world, you can see the uh, production truck. And in the background, and WWE, like why would they have someone walk out at that specific point? pan into this figure in the background and a few eagle-eyed viewers have suggested that looks similar to The Fiend. Like the jacket, the presentation, the way he stood. Go check that out. Again, I can't put up the full scene. So go to September the 2nd, that Baron Corbin JBL interaction. And just as JBL is pulling away, someone comes out of the production truck. And it kind of looks like The Fiend with the jacket, the long jacket. Um, again, probably massively reaching, but I just thought it was something worth mentioning because people are talking about it. Um, but the one thing that's great about all of this is literally at any point, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, could return. 
And I do believe WWE are swerving us a little bit at the moment by saying apparently his, you know, his contract demands were, were very high in terms of uh, monetary offering. Um, but hey, it's going to be, isn't it? When you're one of the, well, literally the former biggest merchandise mover, you're going to demand a high salary. They're going to swerve us. They're not going to tell dirt sheets. They're not going to tell reporters that he's coming back, are they? Because that'll spoil the surprise. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, be really appreciative if you can like the video and even better, subscribe if you're new. Um, feel free to message me, head to the about section, email me if you've got any ideas for videos or if you hear any interesting updates or you pick up things that maybe we missed on the channel. Thank you so much. See you soon.